isang mapagpalang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening everyone, this is Brother Jonas and this is for our Overflow Series Day 593, 593 days of being together and then this is for our fourth day of our series, new series, 14 Days to Nurture Your Relationship, number four, let God be the center of your family. This is so amazing. And thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I know that you are all excited. Me too, I'm just so excited for today. And uh, this series, Nurture Your Relationship, because I believe that our relationship is very important. It's very crucial. And it's also, for me, another form of wealth. And I'm here beside the uh, Iba Beach here in Sambales. <laughs> so tonight our topic is let God be the center of your family. Do you want to become happier in your life, in your family life? Do you want to experience more blessings, more success in your family life? Then you need to put God at the center of your family. And uh, sometimes we stress our family members. We force them to do a lot of things. And... Uh, there will always be a lot of conflicts because of misunderstanding maybe because we are not anchored with the teaching of God. We are not anchored with what's written in the Bible. We are not anchored with uh, the good news. We are not anchored with what's written in the Bible on how to nurture our relationship even more. And so that's our topic for tonight. Let God be the center of your family. I have a lot of friends that I really admire. I mean, married couples with their children, serving in the church. I remember one family playing in their, during their fellowship, family, worshiping together, praising together as one. And it's just so great. It's just so amazing because the parents influence their children very well. And a lot of us are, you know, we are victims of victims. Sometimes we don't need to blame our parents if they did not teach us something, you know, that um, we don't like. But uh, uh, in terms of spiritual foundation in terms of our relationship okay spiritual relationship it is very important that especially the parents should really move their children to faith to go to church as for me um we are a different family like unconventional maybe but my parents motivated me inspired me to always seek the lord i don't know but Based from their teaching, I started to love God. I started to serve the Lord. So when I was young, even in my elementary days, I already loved to, I already loved to go to church. I already enjoyed attending the mass even when I was still young. When I was in my high school, I remember first year student. Uh, I was still first year, but I already loved to go to church. Like this is part of my goal. I cannot uh, survive my my week without going to the church without seeking the Lord, without uh, attending the Holy Mass, receiving communion. And I carried that even when I was in high school and my college. But I think it's very important for parents, for children to talk together, to connect with each other in order for them to nurture their relationship, in order for them to make God the center of their relationship. So our problem is that maybe, you know, one, one struggle is we have different faith in our family members. And that's actually the start of division and also problems in our family is when one is not going to church and you are not as one family glorifying the lord you know the cliche the pray, the family that prays together stays together that's really true making god the center of everything yeah so tonight this is our uh, question of the night how to strengthen your family's spiritual foundation so what the, what are the things that you do in order for you to strengthen your relationship with your family members can you please share that with me tonight okay how to strengthen your family's spiritual foundation and our wisdom to ponder for tonight is this when god is the center of your family you will overcome whatever storms that come your way even if you will struggle maybe marital problems maybe problems with your children maybe problems with your finances and maybe problems with your work that will affect your family all this or any related family related problems i'm telling you you can still survive and you can overcome that if god is the center of everything if you seek the lord every single day of your life if you honor god every single day of your life and if you believe that god is the the center of your relationship the top one priority in your family the number one priority in your family is god praying together then i'm telling you you will never go wrong with praising god with glorifying the lord and experiencing the goodness of the lord experiencing the fullness of the lord okay so that's our um 
wisdom to ponder. And before I share with you our Bible verse for tonight, can we all close our eyes and feel the presence of the Lord, and of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles today i open myself to god's word so that i become more like jesus every day today i proclaim that i am god's beloved i am god's servant i am god's powerful champion and because i am blessed i am blessing the world in jesus name Amen and amen. Then of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Marami salamat po sa inyong lahat. And our Bible verse for tonight is from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 36 that says, Everything is from Him and for Him and for Him. Glory belongs to Him forever. Napakadaming for Him. But everything is from Him and by Him and for Him. Glory all belongs to God. So even your family, the joy that you have in your family, everything will come from the Lord. And that's why it's very crucial for us, okay? It's very crucial for us, very important for us to always seek God, to bless your family, to guide your family. It's very crucial that you make Him the center of your relationship. So that's our Bible verse for tonight from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 36, that says, Everything is from the Lord, and by Him and for Him. And I hope that we glorify God to our family members, okay? So that's the most important thing that you need to do. Today, I want to share five ways in order for you to enjoy life yeah, with the sand. <laughs> in order for you to let God be the center of your relationship, of your family. So number one here is, if your family honors God, there is nothing that you cannot overcome. A family that prays together a family that worship together, a family that honors God, then there is nothing that you cannot win. You will encounter problems, you will experience many problems, but if you anchor your family, your values, the things that you do towards the Lord, then I am telling you, you can overcome any strong in your life. If your family, if your family honors God, there is nothing that you cannot overcome. Now, if you are worshiping the Lord or glorifying the God, if you, God, if you are making God the center of your relationship, sometimes you ask the Lord, like, Lord, can you please remove all my problems? Because I'm already, we are praying together, we are glorifying. Sometimes that's our uh, main intention, asking the Lord to remove all our problems, making your family intact. But, you know, it's not really about, you know, serving God or praying together. You're trying to honor God. And then you expect God to remove all the problems in your life. That's not it. Because... I believe that what God can do, the best thing God can do is to, the best thing God can do is to strengthen you. It's not about Him removing the baggage in your family. It's not about Him removing all your problems in your family. But it's about Him making you stronger, making you back, you know, that you can carry all the baggage, all the problems, and that giving you the courage to overcome whatever problems that you will encounter. Again, okay, God's way is different. I didn't, you know, I didn't think that God moves in a way that He will remove all your problems. God will do something that uh, He will, you will never experience problem again just because you make God the center of your family, just because you made God the center of your relationship. No, if your family honors God, there is nothing that you cannot overcome. You can overcome it. You can become above your negative circumstances. But always remember, always remember. That there's nothing in your life, problems in your life that you cannot overcome if you have God in your life. If you worship the Lord, if you honor the Lord. Amen. That's our number one for tonight. Number two is you need to create practical ways in order for you. You need to create practical ways in order for you to glorify the Lord. You need to create pra practical ways in order for your family to worship God, maybe you can have your okay during the during when we whenever we eat, we need to glorify the Lord. Okay, we need to worship God, we need to honor Him, we need to pray together. For example, how about a family that you when you wake up in the morning, uh, you call your children and then you started praying? You know, maybe that's the best thing that you can do. Yeah, that's very crucial, that's very important. And um, practical ways is that something that can follow, action steps, something that they can follow, something that you can do. Maybe Sunday, your whole Sunday will be dedicated to the Lord. Anything. But it's actually something that you need to put in your schedule. And if you're a father right now, parent, especially 
father, okay? You can impose time for your family to create practical ways so that you really make God the center of your relationship, so that you will really make God the center of your family. Sometimes it's not really magic. You know what? I believe in doing something like having that conscious doing, conscious effort. Your relationship with God, making God the center of your relationship, it's not really about waiting for things to happen, waiting for things to unfold. You are in a waiting mode that, yeah, one day everything will be okay. You need to make some efforts. Do some effort, okay? Do something in order for you to make God the center of your relationship and in order, in order for you to become happier in what you are doing, okay? So please do answer our question for the night, okay? Our question of the night is, when uh, how to strengthen your family's spiritual foundation can you please share your best practices as a mother and maybe as a sibling so that other people can learn from you so that they can learn from you okay how to strengthen your spiritual your family's spiritual foundation and with our topic making god the center of your family is you honor god if your family honors god there is nothing that you cannot overcome number two is create practical ways in order for you to glorify the lord don't you don't need to wait for things to happen. You make things happen. As one family, right now, create practical ways. As for me, we need to attend the Holy Mass. You know, we need to, because during pandemic, we're only watching it via YouTube. But it's actually helping my family that almost all of us are doing something. Okay? And also, number three for tonight is, mm -hmm, just for a while, another thing that I want to share to everybody is, there is no perfect family, but there's a perfect God who will be there to guide your family. Okay, I repeat, there is no perfect family. Okay, there is no perfect family. There is no perfect family, but there is a perfect God who will love you, who will guide you. Now, don't despise your family if you have weaknesses. That's the start of our problem. Sometimes we put too much with uh, we put too much expectation in our parents, in our children, in your children, for example, that you want everything to be perfect. Well, there will be misunderstanding, and it's part of it. Okay? You need to do something. You need to do something in order for you to... Um, our third point is uh, it, it's really very crucial. Okay? It's very important for you to consider those things. Okay? Um Sometimes the root cause of our problem is because we are not that much rooted in our relationship. And sometimes because of too much expectation that our family is perfect, that they are like this and like that. Well, there's no perfect parents. There's no perfect siblings. There's no perfect children. It's just that you need to accept the gifts of the Lord. You don't have any choice of having your parents. I mean, it's not your decision. It's God's decision. You don't have also any choice to have a kid like that i mean that's god's choice god decided that okay god decided that mm, that child will be yours and god decided also children watching right now that they will be your parents your father and mother and you cannot do anything okay mm, again it's very crucial for us not to set too much expectation don't expect that your family is perfect but i have a good news because of god's love everything will be perfect everything will be okay there will be misunderstanding but God will make a way to manage conflict in your families, to put peace and understanding and reconciliation in your family. Amen? That's number three. Number four, another thing that you need to do is to model faith to your family members. It's not enough that you encourage them through words. But, you know, your children will believe you when you are doing it. It's not enough that you go to church and then you tell them that you believe in God, but... You're very bad with your words, with your action. It's not enough. There should be congruence between what you say and between what you learn from the church and, of course, what you uh, showcase to your family members, the attitude that you show to your family members. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. There should be congruence. We should model because action speaks louder than words. And I saw some parents... Sometimes they go to church and sometimes they give pieces of advice to their children, but they are not showing compassion, but they are not modeling forgiveness, but they are not modeling understanding and peace. And so, you know, the children will be confused. Your family members will be confused. So it's very important for us to balance what you say, what you do, and what you do. 
especially if you're always going to church, please, for God's sake, you need to do something. I mean, you show to them that you are really getting that spiritual nourishment. You show to them that you are really, really going to the church and that you are learning many things. Because if they will not observe any change in your life, then they cannot follow you. I mean, logic will tell you that, you know, my parents or my siblings are telling all about these things, about faith, about God, but they are not obeying like that. So making God the center of your family is to at least align what you say and, of course, what you learn. Align it with your action. Hmm? That's very important. That's number four, okay? Very crucial for us to model faith to our family members. And last but not the least, this is very important. I want you to serve your church as one family. I really admire because, you know, my family isn't perfect and we have different ways, especially my parents. Maybe they are, maybe they raise us the best way they knew, the best way they think. And um, I don't question them. But for us, um, we go to church and then we pray together, but not that, that much uh, family that's serving God going to church. But for me, especially me, on my side, I really embrace, maybe God calls me to become the servant in my family. So as one family, we don't go to church to serve. But since 2015, I think when I was still, before I went overseas, I already, I am already, I was already serving God during that time. And I carry that. And I'm grateful because they also influenced me and they supported me. And even when I was working in Oman, I was also serving the Lord. So the good thing here is if you are, imagine you are going to church, your mother is a lector, your father is a lay minister, and then maybe you are a reader, maybe you are serving the church as well. It's just so good to see family members or whole family serving together. I also met a born-again Christian family wherein the father is the pastor, the children plays the instrument, play the, uh, play the instrument, and there are some also who are singing. So as one, during Sunday, all of them have a specific task in the church. And I believe this is very important. If I will have my family, I really want my wife and my children to serve God. I really want them to uh, serve in the church as lector maybe, as servant, anything that they can do in the church, anything that they can contribute. And this is that's one thing that I really want to do if I will have my own family. Because it's just so good that your children will be influenced in the church. Your children will be learning a lot of good things in the church. And there are so many things that if they will learn outside the church, they will, maybe they will be put into trouble. So why not connect them and in the church, attach them in the church, give them tasks, and then always involve them in the church. Because through that way, I'm not telling that it's 100%. There are some, you know, uh, still struggles encountered by uh, parents, especially pastors with their children or those who are serving in the church, they still have problems with their family members. But the blessing is at least they will be guided. At least somehow they will have a deeper and stronger spiritual foundation if they are exposed in the church. Amen. So that's uh, five things for tonight. Number one is very important. If, you fa if your family honors God, there is nothing that you cannot overcome. Number two, you need to create practical ways in order for you to honor God, in order for you to really make God the center of your family. Number three is there is no perfect family, but there's a perfect God who will guide you, who will bless you. Number four is to model faith in your family, okay? To model faith in your family so that they can follow you. They will follow you. And last but not the least is to serve as one family. You try, if you are watching right now as Catholics, why not involve your family members serving in the church? If you're a born-again Christian, why not involve your, all, your family members to serve also in the church? Amen? And with that, you will have, all of you will have a stronger spiritual foundation and that Maybe in that way you can make God the center of your family. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I want to pray for everybody. Can I request everyone to please close your eyes and feel the presence of the Lord. We have the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our dear ever loving God, we honor you, we glorify you, we worship you, Panginoon. Thank you so much for this opportunity to glorify and lift your name higher and higher. Lord, we believe in you. We believe in your power. We believe in your mercy. We believe in your grace. And as we encounter you tonight, oh God, cleanse our hearts. If there's anything not pleasing to your eyes, forgive us, O God, and remove it, Lord. And thank you so much for the gift of compassion. Thank you so much for the gift of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you are doing in our lives. Lord, I lift to you the message for tonight. I hope that it stays in the hearts of those people watching now, making 
God making you the center of their families. I pray, Lord God, that they will do conscious efforts in order for them to bring you in their family members, that you will become the center of their family. For God, I pray that you bless everyone watching right now. I don't know what's going on in their lives. I don't know their problems. But I lift to you, Lord, every prayer intention in their hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for everything. Thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing. And I know that you will bless them, that you will embrace them. And I know, Lord God, that you will be with them. Lord, you offer a special prayer for those who are struggling in their mental health with depression, with anxiety, with panic attacks, with suicidal ideation. Thank you so much, Lord God, for everything. And uh, I pray, Lord God, for rescue. I pray for healing, oh God. Lord, as one community right now, we also lift to you the families of these people. Continue to bless their parents, their spouse, their siblings, their children. I pray that you will become the center of their relationship. And if there's any conflict in their families right now, I declare peace and love and understanding and reconciliation. Lord God, we know that you can do the impossible, especially for couples always fighting, especially for family members of oh God, parents and children fighting with each other in Jesus' name. Thank you, oh God, for the gift. Thank you so much, Lord God, for the gift of reconciliation. And Lord, uh, we pray for family members who are far away from each other. May your love continuously bind them. Lord God, I also lift to you the health of these people, especially those who are struggling in their physical health, those with cancer, our friends watching now with breast cancer and blood cancer, and those with chronic diseases. Thank you, O oh God, for everything. And uh, we declare healing, Lord God, not only in their physical health, but also in their emotional health and also their spiritual health. Thank you, God, for the gifts of healing. And we extend this prayer to their family members and friends and relatives, O oh God, who are also sick right now. In, in Jesus' name, Lord, Lord God, we declare healing and we claim victory in their healing. Lord, I also lift to you the finances of these people, especially those who are struggling in their finances. Lord God, we pray for abundance. We pray for prosperity. And we believe that you will provide. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, Lord God, for everything. You will do our very best. And we know that you will do the rest. And uh, Lord God, I also lift to you the bread and butter of these people. Continue to bless them in their work. In their businesses and their studies, Lord God, I pray that you will use them for your greater glory. Continue to keep them safe always. Protect them, O oh God, from all the negative energy, negative influences. And flourish them, Lord God, in their work and in their businesses and in their studies. Thank you, Lord God, for, for using them for your greater glory. Lord, I also lift to you the dreams of these people, whatever dreams inside their hearts. Maybe to work overseas, maybe to go back home in the Philippines for good, maybe to write a book, maybe to migrate in another country, maybe to have a baby for our child as couples. Whatever dreams, Lord God, in their lives, I pray that you nurture it, you purify it, Lord God. Maybe to start a family, maybe to build a house, maybe to build a foundation, maybe to start a business, maybe to pass the bar examination. Purify their dreams, oh God, and make it holy. And I know that in your most perfect time, their dreams will come true. Lord God, we offer a special prayer for this pandemic. We know that one day this COVID-19 will soon end. And also, Lord God, we just want to storm the heaven with praises and thanksgiving. Thank you, O oh God, for the gifts of life. We are still alive and we are so much grateful for everything. Thank you, O oh God. And tonight, we just want to bring back to you all the glory and honor to the most powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Then of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Palapakan naman natin ang Panginoon. Yoo! Yay! Alam nyo, napakasayang mabuhay dito sa mundo. Ano? Nandito ako yun sa Sambales. Okay? Okay? Maybe. Uh, and, uh, andun lahat ng mga kasama ko. Nag, Nag-video off. Okay. Tapos nanay ko yung nag-video off. Okay. Pero, gusto ko lang mag-night swimming sana. Naku, hindi nyo nakikita yung... Uh, Hindi yung nakikita yung dagat. <laughs> okay, so, habang nakatampisaw tayo ngayon sa dagat. Hi, shout out to Doc Maria Irma Padrigo. Maraming maraming salamat. Aha, sabi niya good evening po. And of course, Ron is also watching. Ronnie na, blessed evening to everyone. Salamat po. Wow, Clevelyn Delikinio na nandun sa cottage. Uh, shout out kay Mayor na ding salamat po sa free accommodation at pag gift sa amin na mag dito sa Bien's Resort dito sa Iba Sambales. O di ba may regalo si Mayora sa amin. Sabi niya, okay, after nung talk ko ng tatlong araw, dala niya sila sa resort ko sa Iba. Okay, nandito kami ngayon sa Iba Sambales at nandito, nag-enjoy sila dun sa video okay. Medyo paus na ako kasi nagsawa na ako sa video okay. Gusto ko sana mag-swimming kasi wala akong kasawa. <laughs> Malalim na. Okay. Hello coach, good evening sabi ni Vicky de la Peña Robles. Okay. 
Okay, maraming maraming salamat. Yun na, yun na, nabasa na ako. Okay. And sabi ni Doc Maria Esteban, maraming salamat po. Hello, precisely coach. OMG. <laughs> Mahulog to. Okay. Aha. Salamat po. Ah, Brother Jose is also here. Yes, just give a call. It will make a difference. Thank you, Coach J. Ingat sa biyahe. Maraming maraming salamat po. Sabi ni author Maria Victoria Peralta Bonior, be a model of good deeds to your family. See, nagkasundo tayo dun sa isang uh, topic ko. Tama. Sabi ni Clevelyn Delikinia, going to church together and serve as choir members. Sabi niya, as a family, thanking God for His chance. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po. May Karansi is also watching from Pujayra United Arab Emirates. Maraming salamat po. Hi everyone. Blessings to all. And we have also lovely Rose Rivera Juan Lorenzo. Thank you so much sa tatlong papuso. Maraming maraming salamat po. Emilia Mesito Ginumtad is watching. Yes, there's a perfect God who will always be there for us. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And Rolly Bumaga, Tumakter, hello po. Blessings to everyone. I can't forget that day that my father embraced us after they attended the Couples for Christ. Blessings overflow when God is the center of the family. Amen. Sabi ni Vicky de la Peña Robles, thanking God for renewing my life. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat. Nandun sila sa cottage. Siniwanan ko muna sila. Sabi ni Abigail Kakas Ramot, ayan, uh, mapagpalang gabi from Iba Sambales. Edi sana all. Evening daw po, sabi ni Yet, we are in pizza and tea together. Wow! Hi Yet! Wow! Amen! Maraming salamat. Wala dyan sa bahay si Julius umuwi. And uh, ayun, nandito ako sa Ambales. Maraming salamat yet. Blessed everyone. Oh, Friday everyone. Please do pray for our safe trip tomorrow. We're going to Bulacan. And after that, we'll be going to Nueva Ecija for the book launching of Crazy Cell. Maraming salamat. Jenny Jennifer Saladino is watching. Amen daw. Maraming salamat my dear. I miss you already. Na-miss ko dyan, coach. Oo, balik ka na. Yan po, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. This is my declaration. Sana lahat kayo ulanin ng walang katapusang biyaya at pagpapalat. Sana bagwin kayo ng siksikliglig at umaapaw na biyaya. And uh, let's pray the prayer of Jabez and then the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and expand my territories and that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Amen. And again, thank you so much for the love, trust, and support. And let's nourish our spirit and join hands in prayer. Okay? That good measure, press down, shake it together will be put into your lap. And that blessings will overflow in your life. <laughs> and that blessings will overflow in your life. God bless po. Mahal ko kayong lahat. See you tomorrow. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat pagpalain pa kayo. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Blessings.